Greetings and welcome to episode three of the An America podcast. I am your host, Joe, and here with me are Barack and Donald. No special guests today. We still have to uh, dispose of the last one. Don't joke about that, Joe. That's not funny. Don't worry. I'm not joking. What? All right. Let's do the mandatory anime news roundup. All right. That was fun. On to the next topic. That's it? There was no news? There definitely was. Joe, this is why we didn't want you to be the host. You're lucky I prepared for this exact scenario. First off, a Scott Pilgrim anime got announced featuring the cast from the movie. You know, I always thought Michael Sarah would make a good anime protagonist. Then we got some goofy-ass April Fool's announcements on March 31st due to time zones. For example, the ReZero Twitter posted a fake announcement of a new spinoff called ReZero, Life in a Wizard Girl from Zero, where Rem and Ram are magical girls. What? Did I hear that right? Life in a magical girl? Is the MC a fetus? Wait, is Rem pregnant? It's fake, Donald. Don't worry about it. There was also a Bleach dating sim announced, but they went all in for this gag so you can actually go and play it on the Bleach website. If you know Japanese, of course. Wait, seriously? You date the boys, Donald, not the girls. Damn. Disappointing, I know. I did just catch up on Bleach, though. It fell off a little after Soul Society and got kind of boring, but the thousand-year blood war was incredible. I mean it. It was really great. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I still need to start Bleach, though. It's been on my watch list for like 20 years. I tried to watch it, but I followed the three-episode rule and concluded it was trash. Joe, the three-episode rule only really works for the usual 12 to 13 episode anime. If a show has like 400 episodes, you gotta adjust it. Whatever, it still sucks. Anyways, there was an actual Magical Girl announcement for a Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card sequel. And finally, there was an announcement for a quintessential quintuplets anime that adapts stories from the manga that were left out of the original adaptation. It's the same thing they're doing with Hori Mia Peace. Oh yeah, that's an interesting way to milk the series most definitely. Count me in. I'll be there. But I have to say it is definitely less enticing because the series is over now. We got pretty good closure, especially since Best Girl won. What? So it'll be kind of weird to go back. Disagreed, Donald. Futaro chose literally the, the worst possible girl. I don't want to spoil the audience, but let's just say I would have been fine. We're with literally anyone else. Yeah, that's one of the main problems with harem shows. If you have like 10 girls and one wins, you're still pissing off like 90% of the audience. There is the rare occurrence that the MC ends up with all the girls, but well, the chances of that being satisfying and done well are incredibly low. Barack, you've seen harem shows before? I never would have thought. Yeah, a long time ago, I used to be pretty into it. I really used to love stuff like Girls Bravo back in the day, but the formula got tired really quick. Watching Harem now is like seeing the same show over and over again with a different texture pack. I do still indulge in it every once in a while, though, but not often. I think most recently I read the Boku Bun manga, which was decent. In a surprise twist, I actually ended up liking the way they ended that one. Ooh, I love that anime. Mafuyu might be one of the greatest fictional characters ever conceived. Whoa there, I wouldn't go that far. She's not even the best in her own story. Agreed. Asumi is definitely the best. And Barack, I get what you're saying about uh, how formulaic of a genre it is, but like all formulas, it can be done right and done wrong. That's true, but it's usually just done mediocre at best. Watching the childhood friend get shafted every time is not at all fun or interesting. Well, childhood friends never deserve to win anyways. They're usually super boring in comparison to the transfer student and everyone else who joins the harem. Anyways, the winter season is wrapping up, which means that spring has begun. I think it's too soon to uh, pass judgment on any of these shows, but do you guys have anything to say about them? Yeah, I do, actually. Donald, you said the legendary hero is dead, was going to be the best isekai of the season, but I watched episode one, and it's not even an isekai. It's just normal fantasy. Whatever, that's just a technicality. Isekai and fantasy are basically the same thing. I did want to talk about a different isekai, though. Have you guys seen Kamikatsu? I've seen the screenshots. No, what's that? All right, let me explain. So it's about this dude, I forgot his name, but he gets isekai by his cultist dad who put him in a barrel and threw him off a cliff into a river, so he drowns. And then he is woken up in another world by a cute girl giving him a hand job. Whoa, and whoa, then... whoa, what the fuck? No, stop right there. I can't just pretend like I didn't hear that. What do you want me to say? That's what happens. It's etchy. I didn't even mention the part where his life flashes before his eyes, and one of the things he sees is himself watching porn. It's funny stuff. All right, I have nothing to say. Carry on. Okay, so then he goes to a small village, meets the people, and then this amazing abomination of animation shows up. 
Hold on, let me mirror it to the monitor. This thing shows what up. What in the holy Jesus? This thing looks like it crawled out of a PSP game. This is all I wanted to talk about. It's the funniest shit I've seen in a long time. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but God damn it, who cares? I am entertained. Honestly, I might check out the show just for this. Why does he have human teeth? I don't know, Joe, but I'm not complaining. This monstrosity has more entertainment value than every other anime that uses CGI combined. It's funny, Donald, but that's a bit much. I know, dumbass. Ever heard of exaggeration for comedic effect? If you want my more boring, unexaggerated opinion, then I'll just say that this is unironically better than something like Chainsaw Man that has shit-looking CGI and tries to play it seriously. This scene is meant to be comedic, and the shit CG just enhances the comedy. Not this shit about Chainsaw Man again, Donald. Sure, it looked off in a few shots in episode one, but it looked really damn good most of the time. You can't just hate CG every time you see it. Most of it sucks, though. I think it's fair. Look, I'm not saying that all CGI looks like X-Arm, but it takes me out of the experience every time I notice it. I'll be watching the show, and even if it's decent CGI, I'm thinking, oh, that's CGI, instead of thinking about what's actually happening in the scene. Like if Overlord has an important battle but puts 30 shitty CGI goblins on the screen, how am I supposed to take it seriously? MAPPA is the biggest offender, though, with Chainsaw Man, as I mentioned, and Attack on Titan. The movement is always super jank. They've got to stop with that garbage. They better not taint One Punch Man Season 3 with it. I get your point, but I think anything will look better than Season 2 did. I would have been surprised if J.C. staff could live up to the expectations of Season 1, but Jesus Christ, it didn't have to be that bad. Well, you know what they say, lightning doesn't strike twice. What the hell are you talking about, Joe? Lightning strikes millions of times per day. Either way, Donald, I get what you're saying, but not only is CG a necessity nowadays, but I think it is even better than 2D animation sometimes. Especially when it's used for vehicles, like even though the cars in Initial D look super dated, it's better than if they were in 2D because the movement looks more natural and you can actually feel their weight and momentum. Well, that kind of stuff is normal, so I can at least put up with it. It's really the CG characters that I hate most. You should watch Trigun Stampede, or really anything by Studio Orange. It'll blow your mind. Usually, though, full-on CG characters turn out looking like shit. I'll agree on that. I'll never forgive them for what they did to Berserk. I think my favorite use of CG, though, is when they have 3D backgrounds and animate 2D characters over them. That's what they did for that famous Levi scene in Attack on Titan. It lets them move the camera all around and get very creative. Oh yeah, that scene was crazy. You could tell where the budget went. That's not how animation works, Donald. Companies don't just throw money at a scene to make it look good. And how do you know that? Are you an animator? No, but I have Wikipedia. Budget does have a hand in the look and quality of a show, but it's not the defining factor, okay? That scene looks good because it was well-directed and was done by an incredibly talented animator. Not because they had a crazy huge budget, which they probably didn't. All right, know it all. I get it. Very informative. You didn't have to say all that, though. It's really not a big deal. I did, and it is. Anyways, as I was going to say before you interrupted me, it's fine when they use CG like that for backgrounds and stuff. I didn't even realize it was there in that Levi scene until you mentioned it. All right, that's reasonable then. Also, I just remembered, if you want another example of good CG, there's also the JoJo openings. Those are absolute bangers. On the other hand, though, you've got something like the opening for Baki the Grappler Season 2. Hold on, let me put it on the monitor. Look at this garbage. Wow, yeah, that's just awful. Who thought that was a good idea? According to Mal, it was the director of Boku no Pico. That explains a lot. Yeah, that checks out. I didn't know bad openings could even happen. Yeah, you don't see a lot of those, but they're definitely out there. Off the top of my head, now and then here and there has okay music, but visually it's just small pictures of the characters in the center. Not super fun to watch. The show is good, though. Also... Code Geass OP3 has a bad case of floating PNG syndrome. Good thing they only used it for two episodes. I can't think of any bad ones myself, but I could list my favorites for days. Yes, Donald, please tell us how good Naruto opening 783 is. Naruto definitely has some iconic ones. Every time they change the intro, I'm disappointed, only to realize five episodes later that the new one is actually amazing too. Naruto has some good ones, but they're definitely overrated. Personally, I love the classics, Lane, Key the Metal Idol, Cromarty High School, great stuff. They fit the shows perfectly while still being absolute bangers. I don't even know why I like the Cromarty High School one, it just puts me in a trance every time. 
Also Evangelion, of course, but that's kind of a given. As much as I hate Ava, it does have a good opening. For my own personal favorites, call me basic, but SAOs are top tier. It's a cardinal sin to skip them. As much as I hate SAO, you're right. They've got some bangers. Finally, we have achieved peace. As for myself, I usually skip the uh, opening, so I don't actually have much of an opinion here. Are you serious? Joe, what the fuck is wrong with you? Today's episode is sponsored by DocBox. For those who don't know, DocBox is a subscription box service that sends you an assortment of random and authentic legal documents every month. I've got the April box right here. Let's see what I've got. All right, we've got a copy of Joe's will. That'll be useful. Ooh, a cease and desist letter. Then there's an eviction notice and a petition for divorce. Wow, these are absolutely perfect. Thanks, Doc Box. All right, last week I asked for some recommendations to talk about on the show, and we have chosen a total of three from the comments section. Let's get into it, fellas. All right, first off, we've got Astro Lost in Space, as mentioned in a comment from Rising. What did y'all think? I hate to say it, but it's incredibly mid. Donald, as the resident plot explainer, do you want to explain what it's about? Yeah, no problem. So basically, it's like if the magic school bus took a field trip into space, but Miss Frizzle abandoned all the kids and Arnold was an imposter. A real explanation, Donald. Fine, but it'll be way more boring. So a group of students in the future go on a field trip to space, but they get teleported somewhere random and are stranded, so they have to make their way back to Earth. Wait, if they got teleported somewhere random, is it Isekai? Oh, shut the fuck up. Anyways, I thought it was a pretty good show. Not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's good for what it is. That's fair. I think it's pretty mid, but if we did a tier list of all the mid anime out there, it'd be near the top. I really liked the first half of the show where they basically delved into one character per episode, but after that it was just plot, plot, plot with the most predictable twists of all time. I kind of agree, Barack. The plot twists were pretty predictable, but I think it's fine. I personally quite enjoyed the direction the story went anyway. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with Joe. I predicted literally every part of the story, but that doesn't mean I wasn't satisfied by it. I guess I'm the odd one out then. The show declined so hard for me that by the end of the show, I felt nothing for the characters I once cared about. I should have been crying, but instead I was like, huh. Speaking of the characters, though, I will commend the character designs. They're all quite colorful, unique, and pleasing to the eyes. Yeah, my favorites were the main pink-haired chick and the... The girl with massive tits. You know me so well. I like the... We know you liked Fettuccine or whatever her name is, Joe. What? Who? You know, the sister with the puppet. She had a weird-ass name. They did have some wacky names in there, like who the hell would want to be named Olger Zweig? I'd feel better about myself if I was named Trash Boat. You know, some dude named Olger Zweig is about to pull up in the comments section. Sorry, Olger, your name is ass. Is that all you fellows want to say for this show? Yeah, that's about it. As one last note, even though I called it mid, I would recommend it if you're new to anime. Barack, I liked it, and I've been watching anime for 60 years. Good point. Next anime. All right, next we have uh, Laid Back Camp, a show where girls camp. This one was requested by King Leader 42 I gotta say, fellas, I absolutely love this one. I have never felt so, so comforted in my life. I don't know why you like this slice of life shit, Joe. Every episode is a filler episode. Filler is only bad because it's wedged between uh, actual story progression. That's not a problem here. You just get to chill and enjoy relaxation. I will never understand your brain, old man. I'm only four years older than you. Yuru Camp is a pretty good Iyashke anime, if I do say so myself. What was that about Inuyashiki? Did you know I'm in that anime? He never mentioned Inuyasha, Donald. Iyashke, guys. Iyashke, it's easy. It's a subgenre of slice of life that translates to healing. Essentially, just relaxing shows where you watch people do ordinary things. For example, No Known Biori, Aria, Girls Last Tour, or Mushishi. How is that different to normal slice of life? I don't know how to explain it any further. It's just supposed to heal your mind and calm you down. Sounds boring. Yes, we get it, Donald. It's not the show's fault you can't pay attention to anything that doesn't have uh, Minecraft parkour gameplay filling up half the screen. And let me guess, it puts you to sleep? Right on the money. And I'm not joking. I actually fell asleep every time I tried to watch it. It put me to sleep, too, but that was on purpose. It's a good anime to fall asleep, too. That mindset makes no sense. You want me to pay attention better, and you're over here watching it unconscious? They've got to have more stuff going on so you actually want to pay attention. You're missing the point, Donald. The show is supposed to put your mind at ease. You've got to let go. If you're looking too much into it, you'll get nothing in return. I, for one, quite like the show. It's incredibly cozy, cute, and is visually very nice. 
I will admit, I did kind of like the characters. I just wish they were doing anything other than camping. You want to know how I would fix this? No, not really. Camping in another world. God damn it. Take the original concept, but put them in another world and get some exciting fight scenes in there. Make them hunt for food or something. No, Donald, just no. That's a horrible idea, but in that case, maybe you'd like Princess Connect Redive? I don't know about that one, Joe. Let's just go to the next anime already. All right, next for our third and final show, Conserva Chan suggested a studio trigger show, so we watched, uh, what was it called? Oh, yes, Darling in the Franks. Let's start with you, Donald. I absolutely love this show, Joe. It's stylish, has fun fight scenes, good fan service, and I mean it, it was great, and a very good story with pretty good characters. Most important of all, though, it has Zero Two, one of the greatest waifus known to mankind. I'm going to have to disrespectfully disagree, Donald. Zero Two is manufactured waifu bait. That's absolute cap, Barack. You can't just call every popular waifu waifu bait. That doesn't even mean anything. Think about it. She is an alien that has a chance encounter with the MC in episode one and starts calling him Darling, just like Lum from Urusei Yatsura, the OG waifu. She's not an alien, you idiot. She's a dinosaur person. I don't think that's entirely correct, but whatever, sure. Same thing. Anyways... She has horns, spends half the show in a skin-tight plug suit, and is subject of most of the show's fan service. Plus, she's Hero's childhood friend, but also just like Rei Ayanami, she's a clone that is the best pilot in the series and opens up to people after initially being detached, albeit in different ways. You're really stretching with that Rey comparison. And even if everything you just said is true, who cares? She's an entertaining character. Well, when she started being nice to everyone, I started to like her less, but that's besides the point. Whatever, man. Ichigo was better anyway. Oh, you're one of those people. Yes, I am. I'm scared to ask, Barack, but what did you think of the actual show? Well, I was pleasantly surprised at first. I'll give props where it's due. The style, animation, and character designs were good. The drama was pretty compelling. The world building was impressive. And for a second, I thought, wow, finally a trigger anime I like. And then they just went and had a shitty Gainax ending. Not to mention the fact that it constantly rips off Evangelion and Gurren Lagann. It didn't rip off Ava, you idiot. It references it. And even if it did rip it off, it's impressive that they were able to make it into a good show. If it's just like Evangelion, then it's Evangelion, but without the wimpy bitch protagonist and with a good ending. Explain how the ending was good, Donald. Hold on. First, I would like to issue a massive spoiler warning. If you want to watch Darling in the Franks without spoilers, leave. All right, it's good because it's bittersweet. Hero and Zero Two dying and reincarnating was sad because they'll never see Squad 13 again. But they're together in the next life, so it's happy. It was also really nice seeing Squad 13 all grown up with kids and stuff. I may have even shed a tear. Oh, well, I didn't have a problem with that epilogue thing. I thought that was okay. Except for the fact that apparently Ichigo and Goro fucked off screen and she got pregnant, that was lame. What, did you want them to fuck on screen? That's not what I meant, but yeah, why not? Anyways, when I say the ending was bad, I mean the entire last few episodes. It was starting to go downhill in the second half. But from the moment they introduced aliens through the last episode, it was just complete shit. It felt like they didn't know how to end it. Aliens just come out of nowhere. Zero Two somehow turns into a giant spaceship like a Kingdom Hearts final boss, but with planet-sized titties. And they completely throw out all that good world-building they had. Wow, Barack, did you get that from a Reddit comment? Whatever, fine. If you're talking about the last few episodes, it's still a better ending than Evangelion. It's not as boring and slow, and I'll admit I was kind of confused at times, but at least there was actually fun stuff happening. Ava's ending is just a bunch of confusing nonsense that's miserable to sit through. It's like being drunk versus tripping on acid. You're totally out of it either way, but one is a lot more fun than the other. What the actual fuck are you talking about? I am simply speaking the truth. Whatever, this argument is pointless. Joe, you haven't said anything yet. What did you think of the show? Oh, yeah, uh, what were we talking about? Darling in the Franks. Oh, yeah, uh, well, I love Frank. He was my favorite character, so relatable. What? You mean Dr. Franks? How was he relatable? God damn it, Joe. You didn't watch it, did you? I did. Uh, no, I didn't. Sorry, guys. I was doing my annual Idolmaster rewatch in preparation for the new spinoff. Of course you were. Why are you like this, Joe? You're slower than Fandom.com running on Internet Explorer. Hello, viewers. Have you ever wanted a luxurious room to stay in with free food, a great staff, 
and a chance to make lifelong friends all for free? Well, you're in luck because this video is sponsored by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. All you have to do is commit a crime, and they'll take you to their closest location with all benefits for free. I might even get a room myself. Thanks again to the Federal Bureau of Prisons for sponsoring this video. All right, now for a new segment. It's time to answer some audience questions. Just a random bluebird really wants us to talk about uh, chicken bone and eating crust pizza. As an anime podcast, we normally wouldn't uh, stoop so low, but since you really want to know, we'll give you an answer. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that uh, you've got to eat the chicken bone, and crust pizza is the only good kind of pizza. No sauce, no cheese, no topping. All crust, baby. Yep, it's the only exactly. Way. Thanks for the question. Cool Glacion 64 says, My question for the president, specifically Joe and Obama, what are y'all's thoughts about Kyoto Animations as a studio, and what is your favorite anime that they've made? Why am I left out of Kyo that? Kyo is definitely one of the better studios out there. Their stuff always has top-notch presentation at the very least. Also, I appreciate them being one of the few studios who don't treat their workers like absolute garbage. Personally, I prefer their early stuff from the 2000s like Clan Ad, After Story, Haruhi, and Lucky Star. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd knock off Haruhi because of Endless Eight, and I'd go with Clan Ad over Lucky Star due strictly to emotional impact. The original Clan Ad isn't all that great, but After Story is an absolute masterpiece. It really tugs at the heartstrings. It's actually life-changing. It reminded me that I am human. It's enough to make a grown president cry. Anyways, how about you, Joe? I'm not too familiar with their catalog, but I really like Dragon Maid. All the girls are really, really cute, especially Kana. The other characters are great too, of course, especially the main duo of uh, Toru and Koma Yoshi. It's Kobayashi, Joe. Yoshi isn't in a coma. That's what I said. It's really wholesome and as great as a comfort show. There's really not anything bad I can say about it. The art is cute. The animation is just, just phenomenal. There's not really much more to uh, say about it. It's just a good time from beginning to end. Other than that, I think Sound Euphonium was pretty great. I love Kumiko and Reina together. Plus, it looks and sounds really amazing. The uh, third movie disappointed me in some aspects. But that's all bad I can say about yeah, it. Yeah, well, my favorite is Myriad Colors Phantom. Shut World. up, Donald. They didn't ask you. Anyways, I agree, Joe. Hebe Euphonium was pretty good. It's got stunning presentation. I remember it specifically because it was the next thing I watched after Boku no Hero Academia. It was a night and day difference, visually speaking. It's my hero academia, dude. You speak English. Why are you saying the Japanese title? Whatever, dude. Doesn't matter. It looks fine, by the way. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you don't know, it's okay. I can show you. You prepared a fucking PowerPoint for this? I made it for my panel at Anime Expo 2021, but then it got canceled, so I never got to use it. Anyways, look at this screenshot from BNHA Season 5, Episode 5. Keep in mind, I'm not here to shit on the show. I'm just using it as a point of comparison for why HBK Euphonium looks so good. All right, so I think we can all agree this looks like absolute shit. The colors are dull and boring, and there's a severe lack of detail. The ground, wall, couch, and windows all have the same shit smear texture slapped over them. If I wanted to see the same texture everywhere, I'd just build a dirt house in Minecraft. Have you ever seen a couch that looks like a window? Another big problem is that there's no light coming through the window. Despite the previous shot establishing that it's a bright, sunny day outside, I have no idea what they were going for for the ground either because it looks like actual dirt. Barack, it's obvious you're just using this as an excuse to hate on my hero. Shut up. No, I'm not. Just pay attention. Compare it to this random scene I picked from Hebe K. Euphonium episode 4. Ignore Reina's massive ass head blocking the view. Here you can see the pattern of the wooden floor. The shadows cast on it by the shelves. The light in the back glowing and reflecting off the surface of the shelves and desks. Both are just ordinary scenes of people in a room, but there is a massive difference in quality. Oh, you're so cherry-picking, dude. I'm not. I admit BNHA has had some pretty good-looking shots before, but when I say before, I mean the last time we got one was back at the beginning of season one. You must have been watching with your eyes closed then. And look, here's some screenshots from the same episode of season five, it's pretty consistent how they slap this shitty texture on everything. Meanwhile, here's some screenshots from the same episode of Hebe K. Euphonium. You may not care, but admit you're wrong, dumbass. 
Barack, I think you're missing the fact that my hero looks like that because of an uh, art style choice and different direction. It's like looking at Demon Slayer's animation and asking, why doesn't Uzaki-chan look like this? And Donald's right, by the way. This isn't about Kyoto animation anymore. You just wanted to shit on my hero. Even if you're right, it still looks like absolute garbage. Can you just stop with your nitpicking already? Nitpicks don't exist. Even the smallest criticisms are valid. Oh, shut the fuck up. Anyway, that was all to say that HeBK Euphonium is absolutely stunning and is a great example of how high-quality KyoAni shows are presentation-wise. Sometimes they end up falling apart story-wise, unfortunately. I mean, you know my thoughts on Violet Evergarden. Even HeBK Euphonium has questionable Yuri bait and is sometimes too melodramatic for my liking. I watched it with Bill, and he thought that trumpet contest thing at the end of season one was stupid and would never happen in a real high school band. Overall, though, still solid. That's why I didn't watch it with Bill. I knew he'd be a buzzkill. And for the record, I thought the uh, drama was great. The subplot about Raina being in love with the teacher was stupid as fuck. Oh, God damn it, Barack. Stop hating on the things I like. Dragon Maid is overrated. Fuck you. Next question. Cam K asks, what are some old anime OVA you guys like? Well, I have a few I enjoy personally. I quite like uh, Dream Hunter Rem, for example. You get to see a cute girl kick ass. It's, it's pretty fun. The sequels kind of suck, though. Then there's uh, Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko, an absolute classic slice of life. And I also used to really be into the uh, Blackjack OVA series that started back in 1993. Not my usual fare, but it's good stuff. Oh, and can't forget Gunsmith Cats, either. Not bad choices, Joe. It's weird hearing you praise things that aren't all nice and cutesy. For me, there's a lot of OVAs I quite like. As additions to existing series, Gundam War in the Pocket and Macross Plus are pretty damn good. Otherwise, there's the obvious one. Legend of the Galactic Heroes. For an OVA series, it's way longer than usual, but it's worth it. Your life will never be the same afterwards. Once you finish it, you'll realize how shit your taste really is. This is real art. Yeah, okay, buddy. I haven't seen a lot of old OVAs myself, but Gunbuster and Golden Boy are classics. I'm pretty sure Gunbuster pioneered the art of the anime Titty Bounce, and it's got some really cool and super well-animated mech fights. And then there's Golden Boy. I never thought you'd have such a base take, Donald, but you're right. Golden Boy is legendary. Really? You like Golden Boy? I thought you hated pervert characters. Only when being a pervert is their only character trait. You know I love Rudius from Mushoku Tensei and Kentaro Oe from Golden Boy is the absolute goat. So true, Barack. So true. It's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. And boy, they know how to draw some ass and titties. I mean Did it. you watch the dub, Donald? It's actually amazing. Kentaro's actor gave one of the best comedic performances I've ever heard. No, why the fuck would I watch something dubbed? Here we go again. Believe it or not, there are actually good dubs, Donald. In fact, most dubs are good nowadays. Have you ever watched an anime in Japanese, Joe? Once you hear it, you'll never be able to go back. Yes, in fact, I have. There is the rare occasion where the show has no dub, so I have to watch it in Japanese. And it's good, right? It's all right. Since I'm fluent in Japanese, I don't have the same subtitle problems as you guys, but I think English is simply the better language to listen to. You can't tell if you don't understand the language, but a lot of Japanese voices are just cringe. That's so, and I mean so remarkably false, Joe. English simply doesn't fit most anime. For example, I tried to watch Roroni Kenshin dubbed, but it totally ruined my immersion to hear actual samurai constantly mispronouncing Japanese. And not only does Japanese fit better, but the general quality is objectively way, way higher than in English. They have actual voice acting schools in Japan, so you're never going to hear bad Japanese voice acting. Sounds like someone hasn't seen Too Heart Remember My Memories. You're right, Joe. No one's even heard of it. That's probably a good thing. I've seen people complain about dub lip syncing, but in this show, the Japanese audio doesn't even match up half the time. That sounds rough, but that doesn't mean the acting was bad. It was. I don't know how it happened or how to, uh, exactly how to describe it, but it was. The main character sounded so annoying, I considered grabbing a kitchen knife and stabbing my ears until I couldn't hear anymore. Jesus Christ, Joe. Japanese audio is usually a lot better than that, but I'm not going to act like it's always perfect. And about your points, Donald, it sounds like you've only seen uh, bad dubs. It's really just a matter of, of uh, preference nowadays, but there are some really good dubs out there. I have to side with Joe here. Even though I usually watch subbed, I admit there are some great dubs. I especially like ones from the 90s. 
You know, like Golden Boy. Even if they're cheesy, they can be very charming. The only good dubs are Cowboy Bebop and Ghost Stories. And Ghost Stories is basically an official abridged series, so I don't know if that should even count. Cowbop Baboop is great, but Ghost Stories is a travesty. Don't get me wrong, it's funny. In fact, I'm surprised you like it, considering it shits on Republicans. Oh, I've only seen clips on YouTube, but they're very, very funny. Again, I'll admit it's funny, but it's completely disrespectful to the source material. The original isn't even bad like people think it is. It's not great, but it doesn't suck. The guy who wrote the dub, Stephen Foster, has no respect for the medium of anime and used to just change the scripts to whatever he thought was funny. And it worked. I don't see the problem. You probably never would have watched it if it wasn't for the dub. All I see is an improved product. Stop being a hater for no reason. Whatever. Donald, I think you'd like the BBC dub of Urusei Yatsura. It's kind of similar, pretty funny stuff. Okay, I'll check it out. Thanks, Joe. Okay, everybody, it's time to wrap things up. First, though, I'd like to remind you that this podcast is available on Spotify. Maybe it'll go on Apple Podcasts, too. Who knows? Finally, I'd like to announce that after demand, we now have a Patreon. That's right. People actually want to give us money. So now you can give us money. 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 Thanks for watching the Ann America podcast. We'll see you next week.